Meanwhile, House Republicans' China Task Force releasing a new report which addresses the Chinese Communist Party's, quote, malign global agenda. The report outlines a blueprint for bipartisan actions Congress and the administration can take to address the threat of China. Policy recommendations include providing a safe harbor for Hong Kong refugees, a bilateral free trade agreement with Taiwan, and prioritizing national security. Joining me right now in a first on Fox Business interview is House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and the chairman of the China Task Force, uh, Congressman Michael McCall. Great to see you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks, Maria. Thanks for having us on, Maria. So, Congressman McCarthy, we didn't hear a lot of China last night. I'm glad you're releasing this report this morning. Tell us what's most important. You know, we tried to do this task force bipartisan, we tried to do it more than a year ago. And actually, Nancy Pelosi agreed to it. And right before we announced it, she backed out. This is long before COVID. And the one thing that we've learned, I think, three major items that come out of this. 60% of all the ideas out of here are bipartisan. We need to change our supply chain, not just for medical, but every other element of what we deal with within China. We need to innovate when it comes to the DOD, especially with AI, something that you have focused a lot on, Maria, and hypersonics and others. And then we've got to refocus when we look at the Treasury Department. They have a team there for Iran and for North Korea, but they have no team in there, especially when it comes to sanctions when it comes to China. You know how much they've been stealing from us. So the modernization and the preparation that we need, especially after what we've learned from COVID when it came to the supply chain, you should apply that to almost every element that we have within government of how far behind we were. And we cannot allow China to continue to do that to us in the future. Well, I think that's incredible that we don't have that in Treasury when we have yeah. specific areas of Treasury focused on, on Iran, North Korea, but, but not on China. That, that makes no sense. I'm so glad that you brought this up in this very important we know, we, report. Uh, Congressman McCall, yeah, go ahead. No, we just need more Mandarin speakers as well. There's so many elements of what we, we, were, we got. We were woken up to the real challenge after COVID and the supply chain. And looking at every department in government, there's a lot of weaknesses there that China has taken advantage of us of that we really have to open up our eyes and do something much different. And that's what this report really shows the rest well, of the country. This is a very important report. Congressman McCall, let me ask you why it's okay for Joe Biden to dodge questions about China. He dodged all questions relating to his kids when we know that Hunter Biden was on that plane, Air Force Two, and then took money from the Chinese Communist Party. One issue, I think, is that China has been very strategic in terms of identifying people that will help them, uh, so whether that's in business, in academia, or even in Congress. How come Nancy Pelosi won't allow the Democrats to be part of this task force? Well, I think they made a, a big mistake here. Uh, they just want to focus on the president. They don't want to focus on where the virus came from. That's China. We want things to be made in America, not made in China. The virus is made in China, but we want manufacturing and jobs made in the United States of America. And so what the leader is talking about is supply chain. How can we decouple what's really national security related and bring it back home where it's going to protect our national security, but also provide more manufacturing jobs, be really good for the economy? Um, I think, you know, the idea that they dodge that question is clear. You know, I prosecuted the uh, Johnny Chunk case in 1996, where they're the Chinese uh, director of, of intelligence was putting money in the Clinton campaign. We know the Chinese are trying, the Communist Party, are trying to influence this election right now um, in favor of Joe Biden. And I think that should be part of this discussion as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, one of the issues has been the supply chain. Congressman McCarthy, you have made a commitment to America in terms of creating jobs should you become the speaker and take the uh, majority in the House of Representatives this upcoming November. That commitment to America zeroes in on job creation. How long is it going to take to get these 10 million jobs created uh, that you believe you can uh, fire up from moving supply chains back to America? 
Well, we believe we'll create 10 million new jobs within the next year uh, at the end of it. But what, one of the elements of making that happen is exactly this, taking a lot of these recommendations that are inside this China task force. Because what it will do is bring the jobs back to America. And when we're looking at the supply chain, just simply, we don't make penicillin. We don't make vitamins in America anymore. Thanks for a, a point, if this was something beyond COVID, if this was a national defense challenge, would we be able to resupply the businesses that we have? Have, are we too coupled with China itself? What we're finding is the answer is yes. And China has been utilizing this for quite some time. If you go back to 2011, we have a president of the United States, Barack Obama, praising the rise of China and saying it was positive for America. Well, now we're finding out that is not the case. And so we have to rethink what we are doing. That's why we looked at every single department. There's more than 60% of this is actually bipartisan. These can be bills that, are, that we can move and pass. One third of them we have already either passed the House or the Senate. But you brought a good point up, Maria. Why are the Democrats not helping with this? Why did Nancy Pelosi pull back? I'm not sure what the Communist Party has on the Democrats, but it's pretty powerful. And we're reading in the paper a lot of FBI reports that China, the sophistication that they have of what they've been able to do to the supply chain, they're now applying that when it comes to the election, and they have determined who they want to win this election, Joe Biden. And it was interesting to me how little he would talk about China or even bring up when he was vice president to allow Hunter Biden to fly with him to get billions of dollars from China. He never said anything that he did, that Hunter did something wrong or that he would stop him if he was to become president of doing that again. Yeah, I mean, you would have thought that China would have taken up more time in the debate last night. There was about 15 minutes spent on, on the Green New Deal and, and, and the climate. Real quick before you go, I, I'm going to speak with Lee Carter in a moment. She's going to give us the dials and what she took away from the debate last night. Let me get a quick comment from each of you on what struck you most from the first presidential debate last night. Kick us off. Kevin McCarthy. Well, the very first thing that struck me the most is that Joe Biden wouldn't answer from the standpoint of who would he appoint to the Supreme Court, a decision that everybody's looking at right now. Why does he not answer that? And, and to ignore the idea of what his son has done, to just say it did not happen, that is a real challenge, and it's an ethical question about what's going forward. Now, I'd rather have had a real debate, let people be quiet, let people talk about that up, man, and you're a clown. I don't think that's a place for the stage, and I wish... I wish the commentator would have come back and not allowed Joe Biden not to answer certain questions. Well, we definitely needed more decorum and statesmanship. I totally agree. Michael McCall, what struck you? You know, look, this is the greatest uh, challenge, both militarily and economically, in our generation. For my dad, it was World War II. Uh, growing up, it was a Cold War, 9-11. This generation, this is the biggest challenge we have, the greatest foreign policy challenge we have. And it was very, uh, it wasn't even mentioned last night. And, uh, you know, I hope in the second debate, there'll be more focus on what is, where are the greatest challenges? The President of the United States is the Commander in Chief of the yeah. United States military, conducts foreign policy, and the Chinese Communist Party is the greatest national security threat to the long-term interests of the United States. It needs to be brought up, it needs to be debated and part of this uh, presidential election. Yeah, we, we also didn't hear anything about Middle Eastern peace, which actually we're yeah. seeing for the first right. time in, in uh, 40 years or so. Uh, but gentlemen, the conversation continues. Thank you very much for breaking that news on the show uh, with your new China Task Force report. Kevin McCarthy and Michael McCall, we will see you soon. Congressman, thank you. All of this is in my new book. I hope you will pick it up. Pre-order the book, The Cost, Trump, China, and American Revival. That is coming out next month, but you can pre-order it right now at thecostbook.com.